Hey everyone, it's Jenny from JC Cards and today I have a card for you featuring the contents of the Hedgehog Hollow August 2019 subscription box featuring designs by Alex Siberia. I'm going to give you a quick look at what's inside the box this month. If you're not interested in that, that's cool. You can skip along to about a minute 45 into this video where I start making the card. I also have to apologise for my voice, I've got a bit of a cold. So uh, first off in the box is the regular postcard. These are always gorgeous and I have them all lined up along my window ledge in my craft room. For regular subscribers, there's this cloth tote bag. I have this hanging off my chair and I use it for scrap so I can dip in and out of it. And then in the rest of the box, there are three sets of Nouveau alcohol markers, all which contain three markers. So these are dual tip, there's a bullet tip on one end and a chisel tip on the other. You've got a black, a blend and a light grey here. Then there's these three different coral colours which are fab for florals. And then three different colours of green, this is the Irish Clover set. Uh, and these are all light, medium and dark shades, both in that coral colour set and the green set. As always, there's some candy and then there is some black amalgam ink from Gina K, which you can use with those alcohol markers. These are the two stamp sets that you get in the kit this month. They're oversized and they've just got some gorgeous florals from Alex. As you can see here, I've already created one card using these with some watercolour and coloured pencils. And then you get some gorgeous cherry red envelopes and a bunch of cardstock and vellum in the kit this month as well as the usual card bases. So to start off with I'm using my Misty and I have a panel of Express It white cardstock. This is specially made for alcohol markers. You can use Nina Solar White or any white cardstock that you might have in your stash. I just like to use this one when I'm using alcohol markers because it stops the bleeding. I'm pretty uh, typical of me, especially when using reds and corals, I, I tend to get some bleeding and this cardstock helps me quite a lot in stopping that happening. I'm going to be fussy cutting out my images, so I've lined them all up on my Misty and I'm inking them up with the amalgam ink. Uh, and this is just helping me stamp them all in one go. And I do stamp them twice just to get a crisp image in a couple of areas on this first stamping. There were a couple of areas where I hadn't quite inked up the stamp properly. And I do recommend, uh, certainly with this ink, using your heat tool to heat set it before you then start using the alcohol ink markers just to avoid any possible smearing. So I've zoomed in and I'm going to show you in real time just how I coloured in some of the petals on this floral. I am not an alcohol ink marker artist by any stretch of the imagination. I use them quite rarely. Uh, when I do I enjoy it. So I'm going in with the light coral colour and I'm just colouring in the whole of the petal. I'm doing this in kind of sections. So I don't want the ink to dry fully before I go in with my second colour. And then I'm going in with the medium shade. I'm adding a little bit of shading just towards the centre of the flower and then also under where that petal curls over. So by adding that shading just underneath it gives that illusion of depth as if that petal is curled up and over the other side of it. Now for this third petal that you can see here, I'm adding the shading towards the outer edge. That's because actually if you step back and look at the, the flower, that petal is actually curling over towards the inside of the flower. So the shading I'm adding to the outside. That's just how I like to do it. I feel that that makes it look like it's bending towards the center. You could do it any way you want to. I'm sure that many of you out there are much better using these markers than I am. But I just wanted to show you how I, as a relative beginner to alcohol markers, do it and show that anyone can do this. I added even more shading with the third marker, which was the darkest, just in those real shadowy areas. And then I've come back over the entire petal itself to blend out that shading with the lightest colour again. So hopefully that makes sense. I've gone from light to middle to dark and then blended it all back out again with the lightest. And you can see I've sped it up here, but I'm just going to show you one more time on this petal, you can see where I'm adding my shading is just round underneath where those petals are curling over and towards the center. And here's a quick look at what it looks like when it's finished. I'm now gonna show you a quick look at a leaf. So I'm coming in with the lightest color first. And then this one I'm gonna change up a little bit. I was experimenting as I went. So I'm coming in with the lightest color. I'm just filling in that leaf. 
And then next I'll go in with my darkest colour and add some of the shading towards the base of the leaf and then round the edges. And then I will blend that out with the middle colour, which is Peapod. And then as a finishing touch, I will come back in again with my lightest colour and blend that all out. So there's a tiny area of highlight left in the centre of the leaf. Again, not being scientific about where the light source is or anything like that. I coloured all the uh, leaves and the flowers pretty much in the same way. And I'm using the grey from the um, blend kit. And I'm just adding a touch of a line around the edge just on one side for those buds to give it, I wanted them to be white and that grey just adds a little bit of shadow and gives them a more dimensional look. I then fussy cut them out and then for some interest on uh, my background panel, I'm smushing some of the Gina K amalgam ink onto an acrylic block and then picking it up with a broad water brush filled with water and then flicking it onto the back of the panel. I'll dry it with my heat tool and then for a little bit more interest and texture I'm going to flip it over, add it onto my mini scoreboard and I'm going to score a line with my bone folder every half inch starting from the left hand side and scoring straight down every half inch. I saw Jana Smakula do this quite a while ago and I've done it on a few cards since then and it's a really quick and easy way to add some interest to an otherwise plain background as if you've dry embossed it and especially with these straight lines it looks really classy as well. You can of course do it diagonally, you could do them closer together, whatever you want and there's a close up of it. I'm now going to put my card together. So I'm starting off with adding the large floral directly to the center of the card with foam squares, which I'm adding all the way around towards the center of the image and leaving quite a large border around the outside. What that does is lets me play around with the placement of the extra items that I'm gonna add. So they'll slip directly underneath that edge of the large floral. I'm adding them with foam squares, with foam tape which is slightly thinner, and with liquid adhesive to get different layers and levels of dimension to add interest. And uh, I haven't planned this out ahead of time. You could of course do that without using any adhesive, and then pick up your arrangement with some press and seal, or take a photo of it so you can put it all back in the same place, but I just wanted to kind of play around and let the pieces go where they will and, and glue it down as I went. So you'll see here I'm using liquid adhesive on some of the florals. And then once, once I've finished, I'm going to add that to a white note card. This is actually a top folding note card. And then trim it down. Now for my sentiment, I'm using the Just For You, which I've already die cut a small sentiment strip from black cardstock and then I'm going to ink this up with WOW embossing ink. I have treated the cardstock with my powder bag first to make sure I don't have any embossing powder sticking where I don't want it and I'm going to heat emboss it with WOW opaque bright white embossing powder and I must have got a fingerprint on here but I definitely did have some even though I'd used my powder bag and I just brushed that off with a dry paintbrush. And then I hold it down with my pokey tool so it doesn't fly off. And then to adhere it, I'm using a double layer of foam tape. And as a finishing touch, I'm going to be adding some Nouveau Crystal Drops. This is the clear, the morning dew. And I like to add these on flower arrangements because they do look like dew drops sitting on the petals and in and around the floral arrangement. And then I'm also going to add some ebony, which is the black drop and I'm going to add that into the center and I'll add them quite far apart so they're not touching each other. I let it dry and then I go back in again with some more and you can see the finished card up close here. I do hope you've enjoyed this. If you did, here's a couple of other videos you may enjoy and I'd love it if you'd consider subscribing to my channel. Thanks very much. Have an awesome day. Bye.